Hello viewers, this is Too Fast here. Now I've shown you many videos of me installing car accessories into a vehicle. And I know many of you want to learn more about how to connect wires, splice wires, and solder wires when you're doing car installs. Now this is going to be a two-part video. In this video, I'll show you the tools I use and how to use crimp connectors to connect wires and tap wires. In the second video, I'll show you how to solder wires and install heat shrink tubing. So let's get started. Now before we get into talking about how to crimp a wire or splice a wire, I want to go over some information about wire itself. In front of me are some wires you typically use for automotive installs, and they come in different colors, different thickness, or gauge of wire. These one here are single wire or single conductor, and these two at the bottom have two wires together, giving you two conductors. Now when it comes to the gauge of the wire, or the thickness of the conductor, you might find wires in a vehicle ranging from 22 gauge, all the way up to 4 gauge or 0 gauge. And you might think the higher the number, the thicker the wire is, but it's actually the opposite. A 4 gauge wire is much thicker than say an 18 gauge wire. On most wires, the gauge of the wire is actually printed on the outside insulator. You see this one has a number 18 AWG. AWG is American wire gauge. So this is an 18 gauge wire. Compared to the 18 gauge wire at the top, this speaker wire next to it is 12 gauge. And as you can see, the conductor is much larger than the 18 gauge wire. It's good to know what wire gauge you're working with when you have to strip the wire and crimp the wires together. Now one thing very important to keep in mind is there's a maximum current power transmission for the gauge of wire you're using. Let me put up on the screen a table that will show you wire gauge and current limits. So for example with the 18 gauge wire I have here, the maximum current you should put through it is 2.3 amps. If you're using a 10 gauge wire, then the maximum current is 15 amps. That's why when you're installing a car amplifier or any accessories that draw a lot of current, you need to use a very thick power wire. Many car stereo installers will use 2 gauge or 0 gauge wire, and that can handle 30, 40, 50 amps. In front of me are some basic tools that you'll need to strip wires and to splice wires together. On the left side here are three tools you can use to crimp wires together. And these three on the right are wire strippers. Right here are the three wire strippers I use when I'm doing installs. Now the reason for using a proper wire stripper is so you don't damage the wire. What I mean is I've seen a lot of people use a knife or a side cutter to strip the wire. They might do something like this, cut the insulation, and pull back the insulation, or use side cutters and pull the insulation off. As you can see, it doesn't give you a clean cut. Also, if you cut too deep, you can actually damage the wire itself. Now let me show you the wire strippers that I like to use. I'll start with the one on the left side. This one I've had for over 20 years and I've used it to do car alarm installs and car stereo installs for many, many years. It's very easy to use. Just squeeze the handles together. It'll grip onto the wire on one side and cut and pull the insulation off on the other side. Now, if you look on this side, you see there are numbers here. These numbers are for the gauge of the wire. So for example, the biggest hole here is eight gauge and this one here on the left is 18 to 20 gauge. To use it is very simple. This is like a 20 gauge wire. Place the wire into this 20 gauge hole and when I squeeze the handle, the back part will grip onto the wire and then the front will pull the insulation off. As you can see, it's a nice clean cut and the wire is not damaged. If you look at this wire stripper here, it's also marked for the gauge of wire, 22, all the way to 10 gauge. To use this, place the wire in the correct gauge hole, squeeze down, pull the wire back, and the insulation is removed. This last one here is similar to the middle one right here, and it strips the wire automatically. All you have to do is squeeze the handle, one side will grip the wire, and the other side has a blade to cut the insulation off. Now with this wire stripper, you don't have to know the gauge of the wire. The cutting blade will automatically adjust to how thick the wire is and pull the insulation off. Now on this one, there's a guide here for you to adjust how much insulation you want to strip off. To use it, put the wire right here, squeeze the handle, and the insulation is stripped. So let's say I need to connect these two wires together. I'll first need to strip the insulation. Now what you don't want to do is twist these wires together and then wrap electrical tape over it. On the outside, this might look okay, but over time, you're gonna have problem with this connection. 
This connection can come loose, and with the heat inside the vehicle over time, the glue on the electrical tape will degrade and gum up the strands of wires inside. When this happens, there will be a lot of resistance through the wire, and if you're using this in a high current application, this connection can heat up and start a fire. One way of connecting the wires is with butt connectors. This is what butt connectors look like. As you can see, I have a yellow one, a blue one, and a red one here. These are for different gauges of wire. The yellow one will fit 10 to 12 gauge wire. The blue one will fit 14 to 16 gauge wire. And the red will fit 18 to 22 gauge wire. So depending on what wire you have, choose a correct butt connector for the connection. This wire I have here is 18 gauge. So I'll use this red one right here. First, I'll strip back about a quarter inch of the insulation. And then using this crimper with this die, I'll place a butt connector in here. Now if you look inside here, there's a metal tube inside. Twist the wire a little bit, and then place a wire inside. So the wire insulation is actually pushed all the way inside this red tube here. Make sure the wire is not sticking out, because if it touches a metal surface in the vehicle, it can cause a short circuit. Also make sure the wire is not frayed, and have strands sticking out, this can also cause a short circuit. Now squeeze the handle on the crimper. And this connection is made. Now repeat the same thing with the other wire. Push the wire all the way in. And now these two wires are connected. This connection is very strong and will not degrade over time. So let's say if I want to tap an extra wire to this connection, I'll use a 14 to 16 gauge butt connector. Crimp this side of the wire to the butt connector. With these two wires, twist it together. Place these two wires into the butt connector. Now make sure the insulation is also inside here. Now you crimp this. And the connection is made. Let's say this is a wire in the vehicle and you don't want to cut this, but you want to tap your wire onto this wire. One way of connecting it is to use T-taps. Just like the butt connectors, there's a yellow one, blue one, and a red one. So depending on the gauge of the wire you have, choose a T-tap you need to use. To use this, place the uncut wire into this T-tap. Close this. Use pliers. And push down on this. Crimp the spade connector onto the wire that you'll be connecting to this wire. Now all you have to do is push this connector into the T-tap, and the connection is made. The nice thing about this is if you ever need to remove it, you can disconnect it. And if you remove the T-tap, this is what the wire looks like. To cover this, you can put electrical tape over it or put heat shrink over it. If you want to connect two wires together and have the option to disconnect it, you can use these crimp-on bullet connectors. One side is male, the other side is female. These will connect together and also disconnect it. Just like the butt connectors, you can crimp these onto the wire. Now you can connect these together and be able to disconnect it. If you need to connect a chassis ground wire, you can buy ring terminals like these ones here. They come in different wire gauge size and also ring size. All you have to do is crimp this connector to the wire and then screw the ring terminal to the chassis ground. One more thing I want to show you is I keep all these connectors organized in these storage bins. This way I can get what I need and I don't have to dig around for these parts. Well, I hope you enjoy watching this video and you found the information to be helpful. As I mentioned, I will do a second video to show you how to solder the wires together and also install heat shrink. So make sure you check out that video. Now, if you're interested in getting some of these tools and parts, I will list the link below. If you have any questions or comments, leave one in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. To support this channel, remember to click on thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell so you get notified of new videos.